So we're going to start with church doctrine here. We talk about the role of the apostles in the church. What is an apostle? What was the role of an apostle in the early church? And does that role have any relevance for us today? Does it have anything to do with our salvation? Well, did you know that the role of the apostles in the church is as important today as it was 2,000 years ago? Their role of who they were, what they wrote, is that is completely very important. It can't, the doctrine can't change when they wrote it. We're not supposed to be getting other books or anything to bring it in to change the doctrine that the apostles wrote. Now the Greek word translated apostle means one sent or a messenger. But in religious terms it means one sent from God. Did you know that Jesus the Christ was an apostle. We're going to read that in scripture. <clears throat> Hebrews 3 1. Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, Christ Jesus. So when I start asking people how many apostles they have, you can add Jesus as another apostle. He's the head apostle. Now prophets foretold that he would come and teach us about God the Father. You got to remember the doctrine of the New Testament came from God. Jesus came to give the doctrine that God wanted us to have. Amen. Wow. He definitely, Jesus definitely came to die and shed his blood and, and to be marred more than any man for our sins and transgression. But he also came to give the doctrine that God wanted him to give. So in the New Testament, Jesus confirms that this is true. In John 6, 45, it says, It is written in the prophets, and they shall all, they shall be all taught of God. Jesus was bringing the word from God. Every man therefore that hath heard and hath learned of the Father cometh unto me. They also said that Christ would bring salvation. In Isaiah 54, 13, And all thy children shall be taught of the Lord, and great shall be the peace of thy children. Remember when the angels came to the shepherds and said, Peace on earth, good will toward men. Peace with God is salvation. When you get accept Jesus Christ, your personal Savior, is when you can have peace with God. So Christ brought salvation. The Word of God, in recent times, God has spoken to us through His Son. Hebrews 1.1 1, 1. God, who at sundry times in divers matters spake in times past unto the fathers by the prophet, and hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the world. So Jesus is the head point of our doctrine. And Jesus, we're going to find out, appointed the apostles to write his doctrine. He didn't want a whole bunch of different contradicting doctrines to come in. So he picked those that he walked with three and a half years and taught them his doctrine. There wasn't anybody else that walked with Jesus three and a half years that was taught by Jesus, his doctrine. There wasn't anybody else except for the apostles.
Hebrews 1 3, who being in the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged their sins, sat down on the right hand of majesty on high. God said, and in Hebrews 12 25, see that ye refuse not him that speaketh. For if they escape not who refused him that spake on earth, much more shall not we escape if we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven. Christ came with the full authority of God. In Colossians 2 9, it says, For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Anytime you have a doctrine that says, that you have to do something twice is a false doctrine. Jesus said you have to do it once. When you accept him as your personal savior, you get the Father and the Holy Ghost. So it says, that's why it says, ye are, for in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And ye are complete. And if you don't have to do anything else, try to get something else of the Godhead. When you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you get the Father and the Holy Ghost. That's the doctrine of Jesus. Everything Christ said on behalf of God is the Word of God. And it's also called the word of the Lord, or the word of truth, the word of Christ, or just the word. Like the prophet said, Christ came to teach us about his Father and our salvation. He spoke the words of his Father. John 17, 14 says, I have given them thy word. And now he's talking about his apostles. He says, I have given them thy word. And the world hath hated them because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. So with the word of God, he laid a foundation of teaching, doctrine for the church. There is no other foundation of doctrine that, the, that uh, was established by Jesus. And 1 Corinthians 3.11, For other foundation can no man lay. There's going to be a lot of books out there trying to change the doctrine that the apostles wrote that Jesus taught them what the doctrine was. Jesus is saying there's no other foundation that can be laid. I'm telling you what the Word of God is. That's the doctrine. Don't be bringing in all these other books. I didn't teach them the Word that God wanted me to teach the doctrine of the New Church in the New Testament. I had these apostles that I was teaching. They're the ones who are in charge of the doctrine. Wow. Jesus Christ was himself the chief cornerstone of the foundation. He was the chief apostle and prophet. Ephesians 2.20 And are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. See, the doctrine is built upon the apostles. And when it talks about prophet, it's talking about the Old Testament. Old Testament didn't go away. It's still there. We prove the New Testament by the Old Testament. And are built upon the foundation of apostles and prophets. Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. So the doctrine again, and we're going to, you know, there's hundreds of scriptures that tell us it was the apostle's job to teach the doctrine. Nobody else. There's not supposed to be any other book included in the New Testament. Only the apostles and who they were in charge of. Jesus personally trained the number of men to whom he entrusted the doctrine. John 17, 4. 
says, I have glorified thee on earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me, the apostles. I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou gavest them me, and they have kept thy word. Now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. For I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me. Talking to the apostles, Jesus himself is speaking, saying in a prayer to the Father, his Father, our Father, those that are saved. He's talking to them and saying, These that you've given me, I've given them the word. They have received them. Right? And it says, and have known surely that I came out from thee, and they have believed that thou didst send me. Who were these men? Those men were the apostles. He sent them out into the world to teach the doctrine and establish congregations of those whom God called to salvation. When Philip started preaching and people started getting saved, what did the Jerusalem church, the apostles, do? They sent Peter and John to establish the church and the doctrine. This is what you're supposed to be believing. This is the doctrine of Jesus Christ. This is how you worship Jesus. By the apostles and no one else. He sent them out into the world to teach the doctrine and establish congregations of those whom God called to salvation. Originally, 12 apostles were appointed. All 12 had been personally instructed in the word by Christ, but Judas Iscariot was not picked as a witness. A lot of people say, well, he was a prophet or an apostle. He was picked not to be a witness apostle. He was picked because he would never accept Jesus Christ as his personal Savior. Given every opportunity. And even walking with Jesus, being the treasurer for Jesus and the apostles, he stole the money that they had collected. They called him a thief and they said that he bared the money that was in the bag that was given to the apostles in Jesus for them to live off of. And of course we know that Judas was searching, trying to find money, and went to the Pharisees and said, give me the 30 pieces of silver. People wonder why did he say 30 pieces? Well that was what was in the bag. He spent it all and he needed to get it back in. <laughs> Judas never seen Jesus resurrected. Judas never seen Jesus go to heaven. Judas could never be a witness for Jesus. He was never picked as an apostle for witnessing. The other 11 witnessed his life, death, and resurrection, and when Jesus went to heaven. And they recorded the very words he spoke in the Gospels and Epistles of the New Testament. So they could be passed on to future generations. Now Matthias, Peter went, when the Lord Jesus told them to go to Jerusalem and wait for the Holy Ghost. Jesus said, you know, I have to leave before the Holy Ghost could come. Jesus was said, I am your comforter while I'm here, but I have to go for the other comforter to come. So Jesus told them to wait in Jerusalem. Well, Peter, he's deciding things in his head, what needs to be done. The problem was, 
Peter should never have tried to figure out what needed to be done without the Holy Ghost and without Jesus. He decided, well, let's pick another apostle. <laughs> that wasn't his job. That's Jesus' job. Jesus picked the ones who were going to be witnessing for him and write the doctrine that he had brought from God. <laughs> so Matthias was chosen to replace Judas Iscariot because he was a, he was a faithful disciple who had been with Christ throughout his ministry and had witnessed his resurrection. But he wasn't picked by Jesus. He was picked by Peter and the other apostles. Paul, who later encountered Christ on the road to Damascus, was appointed an apostle to the Gentiles. So Jesus comes to blind Paul, Paul is more educated than any of the other apostles. Uh, Paul had, was not behind as far as miracles and signs and wonders, even, uh, even against Peter. Paul was up there. And Jesus personally taught Paul everything he taught the other 11 apostles. For three and a half years exactly. Now Paul received the word of God during his three years in Arabia. Probably most people don't know what was in Arabia when that was written. Mount Sinai. Paul was sent to the Gentiles, 1 Timothy 2, 7. He says, whereunto I am ordained a preacher and an apostle. I speak the truth in Christ and lie not. A teacher of the Gentiles in faith and verity. <coughs> like the other apostles, he was entrusted with the word of God. But as we were allowed of God to be put in trust with the gospel, even so we speak. Not as pleasing men, but God would try at the heart. You see that? 1 Thessalonians 2, 4. The gospel says that they were allowed of God to be put in trust with the gospel. The gospel of Jesus Christ. The doctrine of God. The apostles only. Nobody else. The apostles only. For this cause also thank we God without ceasing because when you received the word of God which ye heard of us, ye received it not as the word of man, but as it is in truth the word of God which effectually worketh also in you that believe. To carry out the role, the apostles were given the Holy Spirit, which enabled them to understand the things of God. You've got to remember, leaders receive more gifts, more power than the others that are below them. The apostles were the head. They had to have more. Can you imagine an apostle being ahead of everything and, and doctrines of the church? And then someone in the congregation could do more miracles than they could. Heal more people or cast out demons and do all these things that the apostles could do. Signs and wonders. Well, what good is it to be an apostle if you're supposed to be a leader? <laughs> got to remember that God never goes around leadership. He picked the apostles. They were leaders. They stayed leaders until they die. It says in 1 Corinthians 2, 9, But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed them unto us. Who's that? The apostles. <laughs> God revealed it unto them. Why? Because they're the ones writing the doctrine. 
For the Spirit teaches all things, yea, the deep things of God. What man knoweth the things of man, save the Spirit of man which is in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. We sing also we speak, not in the words which man wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Ghost teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. So again, what's revealed to the apostles, they were teaching in their doctrines and writing the gospel, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and Acts, and Romans, and Corinthians. They were writing Galatians and Ephesians all the way down. And when it came to Revelation, that was the last book. There was not supposed to be any more books included. John was the last apostle to write the book of Revelation. And in that book of Revelation, Jesus is telling John, John, I want you to tell those seven churches. Well, why would John have to do it? Because he's an apostle. He dictates the doctrine of Jesus. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? If you start reading the Bible, looking at it, you'll see that the apostles were in charge. When they had a dissension with Paul about being circumcised, Paul took Barnabas and they went to the Jerusalem church of the apostles. And they decided, oh, well, the Gentiles don't have to be circumcised. That became a doctrine. That was a doctrine for us. We could do anything we wanted except eat strangled meat, practically. And don't eat to drink the blood. But other than that, we went under a whole bunch of stuff. And who dictated and said that we weren't? The apostles. That became our doctrine. It says, but the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. There's a world out there that are not believers in Jesus. They don't believe in the virgin birth. They don't believe in a bunch of stuff. They're Judases. They hang around in the church, but they don't believe anything. They're not accepting anything. They've never accepted Jesus as their Savior. But they want to dictate, saying you should put this in or put that in. The scripture says, the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. And to recall the very words they heard from Christ, this is what Jesus said. He wanted to make sure the apostles remembered everything he said. Why? Because what he taught them was a doctrine from God. And he wanted them to put it in the book. So, it says, Jesus is talking, it says, He that loveth me not, keepeth not my sayings. And the word which ye hear is not mine, but the Father's which sent me. See that? Jesus is saying, the word I speak in the doctrine comes from God. These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. The twelve apostles. They're writing everything down and the Holy Ghost is bringing to remembrance what Jesus said. <coughs> The doctrine of Jesus. Isn't that great? They also receive power from God to perform signs and wonders and mighty deeds to confirm their authority as apostles to others. 2 Corinthians 12, 12. Truly the signs of an apostle were wrought among you in all patience, in signs and wonders and mighty deeds. The apostles that were witnesses for Jesus were different than anybody else who wants to call themselves an apostle. 
True apostles that were witnesses were the only apostles. Matthias that was voted in as an apostle, he wasn't picked by Jesus. And there's a big difference. You can call yourself an apostle, but there has never been any other apostle to Jesus picked them. Everyone else wants to call themselves something like that. <laughs> It's incredible because it's not true. Acts 2.43, And the fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. Nobody else was doing signs and wonders. Nobody else in the congregation of the church was doing signs and wonders. It was the apostles who were the leadership, who was the head of the doctrine that was being taught of how to worship the word which God had given to Jesus to teach to them. Acts 5, 12. And by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people. And they were all in one accord on Solomon's porch. With these spiritual gifts, they were able to speak in the spirit and the power of God. 1 Corinthians 2, 4. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. To further assist them, God gave them apostles preeminence in the church. In 1 Corinthians 12, 28, and God has sent some in the church. Who's the first one that's mentioned? Apostles, because they're the first. They have preeminence over everyone else. The more functional roles were given to others. For Christ sent me not to baptize, Paul said, but to preach the gospel. What Christ had to say is just as relevant in this age as it was 2,000 years ago. His word is to endure forever. 1 Peter 1.25, But the word of the Lord endureth forever. And this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. All preaching in the church is to be based on that word. Now I beseech you, brethren, that by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing. How many churches do you know of that doesn't speak the same thing? How does that happen? Because they're not reading the Word of God, number one. They're taking it out of context instead of keeping the Word of God as it is put in by the apostles and making sure that nothing comes. If you are interpreting something and there's a scripture that is contradictory to what the scripture says, then what happened is, is that you are interpreting it wrong. It's really simple. If you're interpreting it right, there's no contradiction. Everything fits together. Said so, so you all speak the same thing and that there be no division among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and the same judgment. That's why in this church here we're studying. Every Tuesday night we have study. We study God's Word so that we can get the same mind. We're all get into one accord because we start to see the Scripture in the light of what it actually is. The more that you start listening to other ministers, the more confused you're going to get. Why is that? <laughs> because they're from different religions and different doctrines. Even the salvation message should be simple, but they make it hard. So speak all the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be perfectly joined together in the same mind, in the same judgment. The apostles recorded what they had seen and heard in the gospels, epistles of the New Testament. 
Acts 22, 14. And he said, The God of our fathers has chosen thee, that thou should know his will, and see the just one, and should hear the voice of his mouth. For thou shalt be his witness unto all men of what thou hast seen and heard. That was unto Paul, the apostle. In Revelation 1.1, 1, 1, And the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants, things which must shortly come to pass. Who is him? John, the apostle. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto Jesus, to show unto his servant things, which would be John the revelator, which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant, John. John's the apostle. Jesus is going to write letters to seven churches. All of them have problems, just about. Who's going to correct them? Well, with the word of God, John is. <laughs> John writing that, the doctrine of what Jesus is saying, he sends it to the seven churches. If there was anyone else that was supposed to be making doctrine for Jesus and for his father, it would have been done 2,000 years ago. There isn't going to be any more books that's supposed to be included in the New Testament. Only the apostles are the writers of the New Testament. It says his servant John who bear record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all things that he saw. The writings bear witness to all men. We do not see the writings of men like Timothy. Remember Timothy is Paul was called him his son. But Timothy didn't write any book. That's second hand. Had to be first hand. Had to be picked by Jesus as an apostle to write the, his testimony of doctrine. Nobody else could write it. Nobody else of all the churches that was in the congregation whatsoever wrote it. Timothy didn't write anything. We have the book of Timothy that was written by Paul. Only the writings of those specifically sanctified set aside for this purpose have been preserved. Sanctify them through thy truth, thy word of truth. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. And for their sake I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. This was done to minimize corruption and avoid confusion. Behold, I lay in, in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. And let's look at this. 1 Corinthians 14, 33. For God is not the author of confusion. When you start reading books that's against the doctrine of the apostles, <clears throat> that's why they were thrown out. That's why the interpreters that the king got together didn't use them. They were there. They didn't use them because they contradicted the doctrine of the apostles. But where envy and then strife is, there is confusion in every evil word. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. Establishing a reliable benchmark of doctrine to which all generations can refer was to prevent division caused by doctrinal differences. The apostles 
wrote the Gospels. And it was that way because they all say the same thing. They don't contradict each other. There's no doctrinal differences. And they should get a new version Bible. Doesn't believe in the virgin birth. Jude 1 17, for beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before of the apostles. See, it always refers to the words spoken by the apostles. All through the New Testament. It doesn't say, hey, uh, uh, remember the words of Mary Magdalene? <laughs> Nowhere. Got to remember, Mary Magdalene never would have been picked as an apostle. Why was well, that? Because she was a woman. We are to continue in the apostles' doctrine, which is Jesus' doctrine of God. Acts two forty one. Then they that gladly received this word were baptized the same day that were added unto them about three thousand souls. And they continue steadfastly. Whose doctrine? In the apostles' doctrine. Nobody other doctrine was it supposed to be in the New Testament. The apostles were the only ones to write the New Testament. Paul will lay that foundation according to the grace of God which is given unto me as a wise master builder. I have laid the foundation and another buildeth thereon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereon. And then it says, ordain men to proclaim the apostles' doctrine. 2 Timothy 2.2 2, And the things that thou hast heard of me, Paul's talking to Timothy, he says, the things that thou hast heard of me, the doctrine of Jesus Christ, among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men. I want that same doctrine I'm teaching you to be taught by others. I don't want different doctrines. I don't want them adding to. It's one doctrine. It's one faith. Commit. It says, and the thing that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men, who shall be able to teach others also. And for this cause let thy be in Crete, that thou shouldest set in order the things that are wanted, and ordain elders in every city, as I have appointed thee. Holding fast the faithful word as it has been taught, that he may be able by sound doctrine both to exhort and to convince the gainsayers. No other doctrine was to be taught. As I besought thee to abide still at Ephesus when I went into Macedonia, that thou mightest charge them that they teach no other doctrine. There is no other doctrine. It says, neither give heed to fables and end endless genealogies which minister questions rather than godly edifying which is in faith so do. In this manner the word of God was able to be spread through the region. Acts 13, 47, for so hath the Lord commanded us, saying, I have set thee to be a light of the Gentiles, that thou shouldest be for salvation and unto the ends of the earth. And when the Gentiles heard this, they were glad. They glorified the word of the Lord. And as many as were ordained to eternal life believed. Acts 13, 49, and the word of the Lord was published throughout all the region. Those gifted to preach were to teach from the foundation of sound doctrine laid by Christ and established in the church by the apostles. For other foundation can no man lay, lay than is laid, which is Jesus Christ. No man has authority to change any of the doctrines that the apostles witnessed and recorded. The apostles' role in establishing and maintaining the sound and enduring doctrine in the church 
was essential. The importance of that role is acknowledged in the vision John saw of the New Jerusalem. The wall of the city had 12 foundations. The wall of the city. In Revelation, the last book of the Bible, no other books to be included, the wall of the city had 12 foundations and in them the names, see the foundations of what we build our doctrine from, had the names of the 12 apostles of the land. That means picked by Jesus. Now you got to remember, I have probably 20 more messages on this. <laughs> it's not going to end. I want you to know positively that the apostles were the only ones to write the New Testament. Period. Without question. They were the only ones picked to do so. Nobody else. So if you want to know why the books are not included, the main reason is because anything that went against the apostles' word was not to be included. Period. 